Hey, what's up folks? This is Phil Meyer. The other day I dug out my PS2 and I wanted to play some of my older games. I had an awkward session with Castlevania Curse of Darkness. The x-axis for the camera controls are inverted, meaning if you press left, the camera will spin right. This is more common of games of that era. Not being used to this anymore, the game wasn't as much fun, and I was determined to figure out if I could change this. So in this video, I'll show how you can remap your controls for almost any PS2 game, and while we're at it, we can throw in some patches to get them to display in widescreen. This video will assume that you already have knowledge on how to use Open PS2 Loader and Free McBoot on your PlayStation 2. All the websites and tools that I'll be showing will be linked in the video description. Open PS2 Loader is integrated with PS2 RD, which is a game cheat system similar to how GameShark used to work back in the day. We can use the system to modify how game works while it's running. So step one is to figure out the game ID for the game that you wish to modify. I'm using version one of Open PS2 Loader here, and it will show the game ID on the right as you scroll through the list. There are also databases on the web where you can look up a specific game's game ID. It's important to note that the game ID is also specific per region. I live in North America, so all the games I own are the US versions. After finding the game's ID, the next step is to look up the game's master code for the cheat system. Without going into a ton of technical detail, the master code is what allows the PS2 RD cheat system to know how to hook into the game's code for modification. There are tools available that will allow you to find the master code from a game's ROM, but the simplest thing to do is to find a listing of these codes on the web that other people have discovered. And a reminder that I'll be linking to a couple of these sites in the video description. Let's take a look at what a cheat file is supposed to look like. From some info I found on the web, the first line of the file should be a quoted string that lists out the game's title and its ID. From my experience with PS2 RD and Open PS2 Loader, this line is optional, but if you're basing your file off of a pre-made one, it doesn't hurt to leave this in there. The next line must be a description of what the following code or codes are. In most cases, this will be master code or enable code. It doesn't really matter what the name is, it just matters that one exists. The subsequent lines after the description for the code must be the codes themselves, and these are hexadecimal strings. The way I like to set up my files is to add a description string per block of codes. So I'll leave in master code to describe the master code. I'll have another description for the widescreen patches block, and more on that in a little bit. And then another section for the controller remaps block. Also, the file must be named with the game's ID. Be sure that each code ends the line that it's on, so after the last code, there should be a blank line. So that's the basic layout for what a cheat file looks like, but let's get some codes that will do something useful. I mentioned widescreen patches while we're at it. Some PS2 games, like Dragon Quest VIII, already have support for anamorphic widescreen. This is where a game renders in a 4-3 box, but can be stretched out to fill a widescreen 16x9 display area. Over time, people have figured out how to modify existing games that did not have this support built in to do the same thing. There are collections of these widescreen patches available on the web. If this interests you at all, I recommend checking it out. As a bonus, these files also have the master codes for the games. If you decide to experiment with these, keep in mind you may need to set your TV settings to stretch the image to widescreen, as the output from the PS2 will still be a 4x3 ratio. Here are a few examples of games I own running with and without the widescreen patches. All right, next let's talk about the controller remaps. This is what got me to look into this in the first place. There's a very handy Windows tool available that when pointed at a ROM image can generate codes that will remap the controls. In this example, I'm pointing the tool at the ROM image I made from my Castlevania disc, and I'm using it to swap the X axis on the right analog stick. Once I have the remap set up, I can click the remap button, which will generate the codes, 
and I can paste them into a block in the cheat file that I'm setting up. I'm naming this block controller remap for my own reference. All right, so far we've talked about finding your game ID, how to set up a cheat file, optionally grabbing some widescreen patches, and generating the codes needed for a controller remap. Next, we need to get these codes onto the PS2. I'm first going to copy them to a USB flash drive that's been formatted with the FAT32 file system. Once the files are on the flash drive, I'm going to head over to my PS2 and plug it in. With the PS2 on, I'm going to start ulaunchelf, which comes with free McBoot. In the ulaunchelf file browser, I'm going to navigate to my mass storage device, which is my USB flash drive. Here, I'm going to use the cross button to mark all of my cheat files. I'm going to press R1 to bring up a menu, and I'm going to select copy. Once I've done that, I'm going to browse to my hard drive. In my case, my PS2 has an internal IDE hard drive. Open PS2 Loader by default creates a partition called plus OPL on the hard drive. I'm going to browse to this location and find the CHT folder within. Here's where I will paste all the code files I've made. After that's complete, I can start Open PS2 Loader. Here I can find a game that I've set up one of the code files for, and in this case I'm going to use Castlevania. I'm going to hit triangle to bring up the settings for the game. Here I can pick cheat settings, and I can see that the settings mode is set to global by default. So the way this menu works can be a little confusing at first. Global means it's going to use a single setting across all games that use the global setting. By default, global sets the PS2RD cheat engine to off, and I'm planning on leaving it that way. Instead, I'm going to change it to per game, and that again is a little confusing. It actually means that for this specific game, it's going to use its own settings. After switching to per game, I can make sure that the cheat engine is on, and then the cheat engine mode is the last option here. There are two options inside. One is to auto-select, and one is to select per cheat. At the time of recording this video, the individual per cheat selection mode here is not actually functional. So what you want to do here is just leave it auto-select cheats. It will load all the codes from the file for that game. Once you have these options set properly, you can save the settings for your game. When you next launch the game, it will look up the cheat file and attempt to apply the codes. If you've done this correctly, the game will run with the patches that you've selected. And in my experiments, if you've set up the cheat file incorrectly, or you have the incorrect master code, it just won't work. It doesn't actually give you feedback letting you know. So now I can play Castlevania Curse of Darkness in widescreen on my modern TV with remapped controls to allow me to use the right analog stick the way I'm more used to today. I just want to mention some closing thoughts on this. I'm playing my PlayStation 2 games on my actual PlayStation 2. If you're playing PlayStation 2 games on an emulator instead, there's really no need to use this to remap your controls, as the emulators will normally have their own remapping system available to you. I hope this video proved useful to you. This information has been available on the web for some time, but I spent a couple evenings looking it up and piecing it together so that I could set it up for myself. I'm hoping this video will save some of you some time. Thank you for watching the video. If it helped you out, I'd really appreciate you hitting that like button on your way out for the YouTube algorithm. Take care, everybody.